Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena. Today, we have a very special guest for you, so I'd like to introduce Professor Peter Cork from the Queensland University of Technology. Hey, Sebastian. Thanks for the invite. It's good to be here. Likewise, good to have you. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Peter's work, he's no stranger to robotics videos, so this is just another one for him. Um, he runs uh, the QUT Robot Academy, which you've done for about a year or so? Correct. So we launched it in May of last year. There's over 200 short uh, video lessons on there uh, about all aspects of robotics and computer vision, and a lot of it's illustrated with MATLAB to uh, put that principles into practice. The two of us have been having quite a lot of conversations on, on robotics education in general. Um, we wanted to take some time in this video to run you through what we've come up with. So we had this, this scheme that we ran with from basically using MATLAB for exploration and prototyping yep. all the way to getting something on a robot. You need to know the theory. Uh, I think it really helps you to bed down that theory if you put it into practice. And there's all sorts of levels at which you can put it into practice. So one way of putting it into practice is just to do some robotics, uh, robotic software, and you can develop that in MATLAB all entirely you know, in, your, in your laptop computer, uh, test the ideas, uh, improve your, your learning and understanding of those topics. And then later on, then you can take those same algorithms and integrate them into hardware and actually make a thing move, which in robotics is as good as it gets. Yes. So for exploration, uh, I think MATLAB, I find a very, very convenient environment in which to do a robotic prototyping. A long, long time ago, I, I wrote uh, a robotics toolbox for MATLAB, provides a whole bunch of functions that are really useful if you're trying to do uh, something with either robot manipulator arms or with mobile robots. So it's just a, a library of functions that are, that are really useful. It leverages MATLAB's power for linear algebra, so matrices and vectors, which are the types you need to represent position, orientation, and pose of, of robots, cameras, and whatever. Uh, MATLAB eats those for breakfast. And it's also got really, really good graphics. So you know, the combination of linear algebra, powerful graphics, makes it really easy to, uh, to prototype your algorithms and see those results in a very compelling way, I think. Right. Yeah, and, and at this point, you know, we're still just talking about kind of learning the background, right? So it's not really about talking to a robot or, or getting real data. It's more about just understanding how things work, uh, being able to you know, flip a switch here and there and see what the outcome is on your, on your algorithm behavior. Sure, yeah. but also to test particular sorts of algorithms like say robot forward kinematics. If you know what that is, well, if you can play with a robot forward kinematics algorithm function in MATLAB, it's pretty clear to, to what it does. Uh, and you can learn about that and the limitations of that. And then you can move on to inverse kinematics. So you've got a whole lot of just sort of unit functions uh, that you can explore. Uh, that's not a complete robot system. It's a soft, one of the many software components of a robot system. Right. OK, so we talked about MATLAB as a, that exploration framework. But eventually, once you've, you know, you've figured out the algorithms and the behavior, you want to test this in some way that represents how this algorithm is going to behave in the real world, right? Correct. It, how it behaves is part of a system. And generally, a, ro a robot is, part, is a closed loop system. So it gets inputs from some kind of sensors, goes through some processing algorithms, some planning, and then the robot moves. Uh, you want to see how all those different components work together. And so a tool that I really like using is Simulink, which is a really great way of bolting together all those different components. Signals flow through all of those close the loop, get some idea of how your robot will behave in the real world. Yeah, and, and there's kind of two things that, that you can do in Simulink, right? One is simulating the sort of the physical system that is a robot. So if you have some equations like or... dynamics of motion. Exactly. Yep. You can simulate those. But then there's the other component in addition to that, which is useful for robotic systems, which is simulating the environment. Correct. So. Yeah, so you can simulate all sorts of sensors from, you can simulate cameras, you can simulate uh, LIDARs, wheel encoders, all those sorts of things you can simulate in, the, in that very convenient simulation environment. Okay, so we talked about simulation. Um, how about we move to some real hardware now? Sure, so the first thing you do, I think when you get your hands on some hardware, a sensor, a camera, a LIDAR, or whatever, you want to try it out. You want to see how it actually works, what kind of data it produces. Again, MATLAB's got a whole bunch of uh, support for a huge range of, of sensors. So you basically connect them to your computer, point the sensor at something, and record the data. 
in the MATLAB workspace or in, in data files. And once you've got that data, then you can then uh, use that to help refine and develop your algorithm. So let's say you've got a sequence of images and you're trying to find a particular object in that sequence of images. Well, once you've got a data set from the camera uh, into MATLAB, then it's really, really easy to, to do that process. Right, and you know we've we've seen people connecting to kind of the standard things like Arduino's, Raspberry Pi's, yep. webcams, uh, but also you can just use communication protocols like uh, if you're communicating to some, something via serial or UDP, or and, Bluetooth, uh, yeah, or Ethernet, yeah. So all of those, and I think you've done something like that for for your robots, right? Sure. So I developed a little mobile robot that we use for teaching in my class. It's a Raspberry Pi with wheels, basically, and so I can use MATLAB to develop code, uh, which uh, it runs on my desktop, uh, but communicates with the Raspberry Pi so I can make the wheels move and grab pictures from the cameras, or I can take that code and put it onto the robot. Yeah, so taking that code and putting it on the robot is an interesting one because that's sort of the next step, right? First, you are able to test your algorithms in MATLAB, you know, just talking to the hardware, seeing what the real sensor data or the real yep. actuator does. But eventually, you want to actually put this to run autonomously on your robot. Um, I think there, there's lots of reasons for why you want to do that. One is you don't necessarily want to be walking around with a tether to your computer. Yep. <laughs> but uh, also, you know, th there's other robotics problems that where you, that just can't happen, or it's not energy efficient. I'm thinking of you can't like, put a laptop on a drone. Exactly. Uh, I mean, you can, but it has to be kind of a big one, right? Big drone. So, yep. So I think you know, factoring all that in, it's uh, most hardware I've seen to work efficiently. You basically have just as much. Yeah, you have as much computing power as needed to run the algorithms you, you need, right? Yeah. So I think your development process follows a, a, a pretty, st pretty standard sort of sequence where you're doing all your simulation in software with graphical output, so you can see how your robot behaves. And then you can run your code in MATLAB connected to robot hardware. So you're running MATLAB code on your desktop. It's connected to a physical machine. Uh, and in the final step is to take that code that you've developed in MATLAB and or Simulink and actually boil that down, compile it, and deploy it onto the hardware where it can run without the necessity of the desktop computer. So you, know, you can deploy code, push it into an Arduino, you can push it into a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and there's uh, quite a few support packages that we offer that, that can automate that, especially for what you just mentioned, the Arduino, Lego, Raspberry Pi, and lots of other common boards. Big um, alone. Right. Yeah. Now, sometimes you can, if you have any additional sensors or low-level interfaces you have to do, um, you can kind of plug into this framework and develop your own drivers. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you might find that it's best to kind of just develop the low-level things by yourself. I think at the end of the day, you can actually write some of your interface code in C, and you can compile that and link that to the code that MATLAB generates. If MathWorks don't provide a driver for that particular hardware. That's not something I've done yet. It's on my list of things to do. Yeah, and I think that li that's the last point that, that we support. It's if we don't have an automated way to deploy to the hardware, we still have the way to basically synthesize standalone code from MATLAB code or from Simulink models that you can then plug into that low-level driver code that you've developed. And it gets around this whole problem of basically writing and debugging an algorithm twice. You write write it, debug it in MATLAB with a nice graphical display, and then you want to put it on a piece of hardware, and it's kind of crazy then to recode that in another language. It's going to take you time. You're going to introduce bugs. So if you can automatically uh, convert code from MATLAB into deployable C code uh, without having to do anything, that's pretty good by my, in my book. Right. So that's a little bit about the progression from exploration all the way to getting software onto a piece of robot hardware. Um, again, thank you for watching. Uh, refer here to all the resources for contacting us, uh, whether it be through Facebook, email, or our blog. And also, I'd like to just give you the link here and also in the description to uh, the QUT Robot Academy. So thank you for being here, Peter. And do you have any other closing comments about any of this? Uh, just to say that there's a ton of resources out there for people who are doing robotics uh, in general, and there's a ton of resources out there for people doing robotics and using MATLAB and Simulink. Uh, I've got a robotic toolbox and a machine vision toolbox, free and open for anybody to use. And I have this resource called the Robot Academy. It's over 200 short video lessons on a bunch of different topics. Uh, 
access them in any order. It's not like a MOOC, you don't have to enroll, uh, you don't have to watch them in any particular order, you just dive in there, search for the topic you're interested in, find a video, and I hope it helps you. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. Thank you.